recognize the leader of the third party. Uh, thank you, Honourable Chair. Two years ago, Honourable Chair, the government invested, uh, the previous government invested $200,000 in the creation of a so-called toad road tunnel to allow western toads to migrate safely across Highway 6 to their uh, upland habitat. Following this investment, Honourable Chair, uh, to help the toads, the Nacuspin Area Community Forest, that's NACFOR, N-A-C-F-O-R, logging company slated 30 he hectares of this upland territory for clear cut. In response to this, two years ago, I urged the BC government to protect the western toad habitat around Summit Lake before it is too late for the endangered western toads. My question through you, Honourable Chair, to the Minister is this. Uh, does the Minister think that the habitat protection and restoration for the western toad has been achieved? And if not, is there money in this budget to actually achieve it? Minister. Thank you, Chair, and um, thank you uh, to the member for the question. Uh, and there may be more information that we may be able to gather for the member, but the area to which the member refers um, is also an area designated as Goal 2 in the 1990s as part of land use planning around uh, Summit Lake, and, and uh, Goal 2 has not been realized. Uh, it is still under active discussion in terms of whether to include the area in question in uh, Summit Lake Park. Responsibility for the road itself is with uh, the Ma Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure and um, management of critical habitat with respect to um, toad protection and the logging impacts on that habitat rests with the Ministry of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations. So I'm not really in a position to say to the member whether um, it's adequate or not because this ministry isn't managing uh, that aspect of logging, uh, that could change in the future when we have uh, different legislation in, pass in place, but not currently. Leader of the third party. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. That brings me to the uh, general point I had in, a, in a quite a number of questions, if I uh, will ask them, is, is the issue of species at risk. Right now, of course, there are numerous species at risk in the province of British Columbia. These species at risk are distributed, a jurisdiction for them is like in various ministries, whether it be Flynn Road, transportation, you have a road, environment in some cases, agriculture in some cases when it comes to, uh, and it's quite complex, and there seems to be no overall strategy here. One of the, one of the, the species that uh, uh, at least a, a subset, a subspecies, or a, a herd within a species, uh, is the um, south, southern Selkirk uh, uh, caribou. Uh, yesterday, according to an article in the Vancouver Sun, uh, the gray herd, gray ghost herd in the southern Selkirk mountains uh, has become functionally extinct. Uh, my understanding, there are three females left of this herd, um, and the herd was a grand total of 14 uh, an, uh, uh, last year and has dramatically dropped uh, dramatically dropped over the last 16 years, Honourable Chair. Um, this, uh, this, this has been despite BC's attempt to save uh, them. Uh, B, the BC, for example, did, did protect 2.2 million acres of, uh, of old growth forest, restricting snowball, they restricted uh, snowmobile access to some core habitat areas. Hunting of caribou was restricted decades ago in the area, and some of the hunters in the region are actually some of the most uh, conservation-minded and most concerned as to seeing what's going on, recognizing that they are not to blame, but what is to blame is natural habitat de um, degradation. Now, I recognize in most aspects that falls within Flinro. However, um, the Environmental Law Center Legal Director Calvin Sambor stated that this is a, um, the province has failed to curtail logging and to fully implement snowmobile bans, and that the province, in fact, um, has uh, granted the Habitat Conservation Trust Foundation $2 million to create a caribou habitat restoration fund. Now, which jurisdiction this falls to, I'm not quite sure. Again, a Habitat Reconservation Trust Fund has got habitat, which I would suggest would fall into Flinro. But conservation, I would suggest, is probably environment because it's a species at, at risk. So my question to the minister um, is this. If the Habitat Conservation Trust Fund is not within the Ministry of Environment, uh, does the minister to, uh, 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 intend to get involved and address the shortcomings of the efforts to protect the caribou either now? Well, I think that we can all agree that that, uh, that uh, herd is uh, on its way to extirpation. Um, and does the minister intend to take more substantial uh, enforcement action through within his mandate from other jurisdictions uh, in, ad in addition to granting restoration fund to the uh, uh, Habitat Conservation Trust Foundation? Minister. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to the member for the question. Um, 
The Habitat Conservation Trust Fund used to be under Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations. It's now entirely separate from government, essentially private. Um, we, in terms of the the overlap of uh, interest and jurisdiction with Flinroe, the the answer to that that we've come up so far is uh, the staff of both ministries work closely together on on issues where Flinroe has. Uh, has authority where the, the ministry is contemplating authority through species at risk uh, legislation and where obviously we have an interest in terms of uh, species at risk. Uh, and, and we have been doing that on Caribou, for instance. Uh, the, the Ministry of Forest Lands and Natural Resource Operations uh, is producing uh, and about to distribute a discussion paper on Caribou. Uh, the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change Strategy is uh, um, finalizing um, a public discussion paper on species at risk legislation. We'll have further announcements on a consultation. It, it doesn't make sense to consult on species at risk without simultaneously consulting on land use planning. So we will coordinate our activities on the two. Uh, um, Flinro is the lead on recovery activities and environment is the lead on policy development through species at, at risk legislation and, if, and we are the lead on discussions with the federal government with respect to um, actions that be, can be taken in areas where it is not too late to, um, to recover and enhance <coughs> caribou populations uh, and we're the lead with the federal government on consultations to the species at risk legislation. Um, Chair, I, I believe the member has a number of more questions. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's a question, then I'd be happy to take it. If it's a number, perhaps we could take a short recess. Uh, leader of third party. I think I have one pressing question uh, that I think I think we canvassed parking lots very in a very detailed fashion over the last week or so. I have a number of <laughs> questions that I feel we need to explore with respect to species at risk and areas that have not been canvassed. Uh, I, this particular one again points to the and it's just the one and I understand you need a break. It points to the the quagmire of jurisdictional responsibilities. Now this one is with respect to abandoned aquarium pets. Now, people may not think that's a problem, but in fact, the abandoned aquarium pets are threatening the survival of the endangered western uh, painted turtle population of Vancouver Island. Given that the western painted turtle hatchlings are just beginning to emerge from their nests with promising numbers, the endangered population is up 20% in terms of the nest number from the summer of 2017. It's more important than ever to protect the survival of western painted turtles. Now, again, what jurisdiction do, uh, does this fall within? Certainly, the species at risk legislation, which I understand the government is consulting on, would, would presumably kick in at some point. But right now, we have an issue of, of, a, of, a, of a, a substance, I'm sorry, of an of a invasive species being brought in. Those are the, uh, the uh, abandoned aquarium pets. And at the other time, we have a species that's at risk. Question is this, does the minister intend to take steps to mitigate the, rele uh, the release of abandoned uh, aquarium pets? Is it his, in his jurisdiction? or is it in some other jurisdiction, or does the minister have other plans in place to ensure the continued growth of the endangered western painted turtle? Minister. Thank you, Chair. And, and first of all, I'd like to recognize that this is a, a complicated and intricate web of, of, uh, of regulations and overlapping jurisdiction. The member's quite right, and uh, the more we can sort that out, the better it is for, in for everyone. For instance, I had uh, a meeting the other day with members of the Invasive Species Council. Uh, they asked if we were intending to bring in an Invasive Species Act and raised some very good points, uh, which we are considering. But there are 17 pieces of legislation currently that address this issue, which is not, in my view, a very effective way to figure out who's got responsibility for what. Um, in the case of uh, abandoned aquarium pets, uh, that would be addressed under the Controlled Alien Species Regulation, which is uh, pursuant to the Wildlife Act, but enforcement uh, of that regulation, obviously it is uh, legal to dump. Enforcement is with the Conservation Officers Service, and they are um, they're very aware of, uh, of the need. Uh, where the public is aware of uh, an illegal release of an uh, invasive species, they can uh, they can phone the RAP line, which is the report a 
polluter or poacher line, or it may be poacher or polluter. I'm always getting them mixed up. Uh, and that's how people get information. But we have also added additional conservation officers in this year's budget, 12 new positions. And all in all, there'll be 20 because there were some existing positions on paper that weren't funded, so they weren't filled. Uh, and that, we hope, will make a difference. In addition, we are, um, as I mentioned, developing species that at risk um, legislation. We will put out an intentions paper in the fall, um, and we, uh, we hope to um, simplify the province's ability to protect invasive species like the western painted turtle. I think the other point the member uh, made, although not directly, is that <clears throat> we need to ensure the public knows more about the threat of simply uh, they may think it's fine to dump uh, a species that uh, they've had as a pet that they no longer wish to have a pet. In some cases, it's illegal to possess those animals in the first place. In other cases, it's certainly illegal to release them into the wild. Uh, we need to do more public education, and I'm, I, uh, I'd be happy to discuss that further with the member and my staff around uh, what people's responsibilities are, as well as the responsibility of the public to report violations because these aren't violations without impact, they're violations with consequence for other species. So thank you to the member again for raising the point and if it's now appropriate to take a recess, it would be welcome. Members, there's clearly uh, lots of interest to ask questions, so we will take a short recess and get back to it uh, in about five minutes.